I think actually now we could start <laughs> and uh, people will still connect uh, during the presentation potentially. Okay, so my name is Irina Heinzig. I'm the chair of REACT, which is one of the technical committees of the GRSS Society. I'd like to welcome you. I'd like to welcome first uh, our speaker today, which is Christian Koyama uh, from the uh, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, so from JAXA. Uh, this is um, this is an invitation, so I'm very happy that Christian took this invitation to talk about uh, deforestation detection using uh, Alban system, which is one of, 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 of a very important topic also within REACT, uh, where we have a lot of different topics uh, talking about uh, climate change issues and sustainable development goals in relation to remote sensing. And this is one of the topics that we have today. So like this, I just give then over my uh, my words, or I give over to Christian, uh, and um, I'm looking forward to, for his presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Irena, for this uh, nice introduction. Yeah, I'm I'm Christian Koyama from from JAXA, and uh, uh, I'm mostly uh, uh, focusing on the development of the uh, uh, operational deforestation system, and uh, also uh, currently we are we are working on the. Uh, next algorithms for ADOS 4 and uh, and maybe uh, beyond that. So uh, we, we uh, try to look at this in, the, in this presentation. So yeah, let's uh, get into it. So this, uh, the, the outline of the presentation. So first I will talk a little bit about the uh, history of the uh, JJ Fast. And uh, I think not everybody who attends here is a, is a, is a uh, Alban SA or SA uh, expert, so we're going to give some uh, information actually how this uh, uh, tropical forest monitoring using SA data uh, works. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, this uh, the ALOS two long term pan tropical forest monitoring uh, that we uh, have done since 2016, and uh, then we talk about the development of the uh, next generation algorithm that is uh, currently used in the in the uh, JJ Fast. Um, yeah, we uh, also, of course, we have to talk uh, about the uh, uh, calibration and, and validation. That's a very important point. Uh, we can develop, uh, uh, of course, uh, something very sophisticated, but uh, if we cannot prove that it's really working, then uh, nobody will buy it. Right? And yeah, in the end, I, I, I would like to talk about, about the future perspectives, perspectives uh, with uh, ALOS 4. All right, yeah. Uh, so the uh, JJ Fast was uh, already launched in in 2016, and actually as a as a um, result of the uh, COP uh, 15, 20, COP 21 in Paris 2015. So Jap the Japanese government basically made the commitment to uh, uh, support the um, uh, yeah fighting uh, uh, the global global and climate change. Uh, by protecting the, the uh, tropical um, forest from uh, further deg uh, degradation and deforestation. And yeah, uh, as you can already uh, see that uh, in the beginning is this uh, project uh, uh, mainly uh, politically uh, motivated and uh, 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 yeah, launched in, in uh, November 2016. And uh, well, uh, we, we of course we have to be uh, uh, honest that at this point probably uh, the, the algorithms were not uh, ready, and um, yeah we we see here in the in the middle actually what what kind of data are we using so the JJ fast uh, uses exclusively ALOS two data and in order to get the full coverage of the of the uh, pan tropical zone we have to rely on the uh, coarse uh, fifty meter resolution uh, scansa data. So actually, that's uh, of course uh, basically the, the 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 worst data that uh, ALOS two can give us, but uh, yeah, we 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 have to uh, make it work, and uh, and and uh, I, I hope I can show you in this talk that finally uh, we actually made it uh, work. So here on uh, this um, table, you can see the uh, uh, some information about the algorithm history. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, launched in November twenty sixteen, starting with the version uh, zero. And then actually all the versions up to 3.0 were basically uh, building up on each other and just uh, slight uh, uh, improvements, increasing the, the length of time series data that was used. But uh, yeah, the important thing is that uh, a lot of uh, mistakes were made and 
well, um, I, I always like to say, right, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's important that we uh, learn from these mistakes. And I think we, we have learned uh, actually uh, quite a lot during uh, this uh, long time of the JJ Fast operation. And uh, importantly was that we understood that we have these uh, beautiful uh, time series all over the uh, uh, tropical forest areas that uh, ALOS 2 provided us since uh, 2016. And using this kind of information, we could uh, start here in uh, version 3.1 to use this kind of info information to increase the, the, the reliability slightly. So using this kind of information, we were able to uh, uh, reduce the amount of false alarms uh, drastically. But basically we, we understood that um, we have to develop a, a completely new algorithm. And uh, that's what we did uh, with a, a version 4.0 that we launched uh, in April last year. And um, yeah, that's that's what I wanna uh, talk about now. So currently we are uh, using the version 4.1 that was launched uh, uh, in November last year. Okay, yeah, so uh, this uh, famous uh, comic uh, about the uh, change detection principle that allows us to uh, detect um, deforestation with uh, SAR data or specifically advanced SAR data. So we, we see here the, the uh, intact uh, tropical rainforest. So we have, uh, uh, as probably most of you know, high uh, backscatter in both uh, polarizations. And, uh, and here, right, uh, we, we usually talk about the dual polarization case because uh, the uh, uh, SCANSA, ALOS2 SCANSA data uh, allows us to uh, acquire dual polarization. And that's uh, actually crucial for, for uh, uh, the whole um, uh, exercise. Uh, so yeah, we have a, a, a high backscatter in HHHV, you can see here. And then after a clear cut, uh, we can observe actually increase in the, in the HH. And uh, after some time depends, uh, uh, what they do if they when they clear, clean up the the surface or they, they burn it, uh, we can detect a decrease in the HV backscatter. And in the past, uh, one of the uh, mistakes, big mistakes that were made was that we focused on this HV uh, change detection. And the problem is that HV change detection basically cannot detect the the deforestation itself, but only some secondary uh, processes. So if we really want to do some uh, early warning, we we should rely uh, on on this kind of a scenario where we have an uh, uh, increased uh, backscatter uh, right after the clear cut. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about the uh, uh, Elban Saar uh, forest monitoring principle. So we already mentioned the uh, dual polarization case, right? Uh, we uh, usually we transmit uh, in horizontal polarization and receive in horizontal polarization. So we have the uh, HH co polarization case. And uh, usually most of the uh, reflection stems from the um, ground uh, uh, trunk interactions. Right? We have this uh, double typical double bounce in the, in the forest. Right? And that's important, right? That L band can really see the full forest so we can see uh, the, the ground surface and have this uh, double bounce um, observation. Then we have the uh, cross polarization case where we transmit horizontally, receive vertically. And in this case, uh, uh, most of the reflected signal stems from the uh, canopy itself. So we have this uh, uh, typical uh, volume scattering uh, contribution. So that's very important, right? The, if you look at the uh, different polarizations, we actually get information from different parts of the, of the forest. And of course, if you're lucky enough, we can have a full polarimetric uh, uh, observation also with a vertical transmit horizontal receive and the vertical uh, transmit vertically receive. And well, uh, for operational use, and unfortunately, uh, uh, we, we uh, cannot rely on the quad pole data because we just don't have enough uh, observations in quad pole. Hopefully, uh, with ALOS 4, uh, this, will, this will change. Uh, and yeah, the, what are actually the, the advantages of L band when we talk uh, for, about forest uh, observation? Well, I think you, you, maybe some of you are familiar with this kind of. Uh, uh, a diagram here just shows uh, penetration drift actually into, into soil, depending on, on soil moisture and uh, observation uh, frequency of the radar system. So we have X, C, and L band here uh, on the frequency axis, and here uh, penetration depth uh, in, in centimeter and log, in a log, logarithmic scale. And here these uh, uh, lines show uh, actually how uh, much the radar signal can penetrate into the soil depending on the on the water content. Of course, this is soil, but when we think about the uh, forest as a as a layered medium, uh, of course, 
similar similar principles apply. And uh, yeah. Actually, when we look at the, the high frequency X and C band, we see that uh, we, we have very little uh, penetration uh, capability, whereas L band uh, uh, yeah, can look maybe, depending on the, on the water content of the soil, we can look uh, uh, a meter or, or even more than a meter into the soil. Yeah, that's uh, uh, another uh, little comic uh, showing this, this idea, right? We have the high frequency X band, uh, three centimeter wavelength, we get the reflections from just the, the surface of the of the uh, vegetation, the soil, soil or, or, or buildings. When we look at the C band, uh, two, uh, five centimeters, so actually the, it's not so uh, big different, right, for, uh, between these two high frequency uh, things. But uh, we already get some penetration into the canopy, so we get information from uh, within the crops or from within the uh, uh, forest canopy. But we basically we are not capable to see the full forest. So we will not get a, 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 a backscattering contribution from the from the trunks and the uh, uh, ground surface. Uh, at L-band, right, we have a 25 centimeter wavelength and we, now we really can penetrate through the vegetation. That's why we uh, can do a, a soil moisture estimation under vegetation and uh, why we actually can see all of the forest at L-band. So we get, uh, even under the forest, we get uh, contributions from the, from the uh, uh, soil. And very important, right, as a, as a, a radar expert, uh, today we should not say that uh, a radar is all weather, right? And especially if you're in the tropics using high frequency SAR, X and C band, you will frequently uh, observe uh, uh, cl clouds, rain clouds that completely blind the system. So uh, uh, I think today nobody should say that, that, that SAR is an all weather system. So we should be careful about that. Okay. Then uh, let's talk a little bit about, about these, uh, the ALOS 2 long-term pen trip of the forest monitoring and uh, what we actually uh, were able to learn from that. So that's, uh, this slide uh, again gives some, some uh, idea about this uh, JJ fast based uh, long-term uh, observation that we did uh, starting in, in uh, January, 2016 and uh, still uh, ongoing, right, we, until uh, today. We currently have maybe 4.2 uh, petabyte of data. So this is one example of this uh, Scansa data. So we have uh, this uh, uh, 350 kilometer swath width, uh, but yeah, with a reduced uh, spatial resolution. And also in the JJ fast or for this kind of uh, uh, long-term observation, we uh, only use uh, uh, the amplitude data. So uh, unfortunately we, we, we cannot do any, any polarimetry. Um, yeah, okay, uh, this is the, the, the uh, observation area. Basically, uh, we did a pantropical observation. And uh, here on the uh, upper right, we see uh, four examples of uh, time series, uh, backscatter time series over a different tropical forest. And uh, when you look here at the left-hand side, actually both of the uh, uh, diagrams show uh, Amazon rainforest in, the, in, in Brazil. And uh, yeah, when you look at the upper upper diagram, you see actually uh, the, the signal is not stable at all, right? And why is that? Uh, this this uh, forest area is affected by by seasonal flooding, and this changes uh, the signal completely because we get this uh, the increase in the in the double bounce uh, during the flooding season. And uh, the lower graph shows uh, the forest area not affected by 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 uh, flooding, and uh, we get this. Uh, a uh, really nice stable SAR signal um, over time. And okay, when we look at other forest types, like uh, a dry forest or the, the Miombo forest in Africa with a uh, really uh, pronounced seasonalities between dry and, and wet season, leaf on, leaf off uh, conditions, we see that actually the, the signal is, is not stable at all. And uh, yeah, then we, we were able to, to make uh, some maps uh, showing the, the um, stability of l -bands, uh, uh, backscatter uh, in the tropics. And uh, yeah, we can see easily that uh, large areas of the tropical forests are not uh, uh, stable at, at all over time. So we have to be very careful when we want to do a, a develop algorithms that are supposed to work uh, all year round. Okay, yeah, th uh, this uh, small diagram uh, shows just the relationship between the, this uh, 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 backscatter variability in HH and HV 
and the uh, user accuracy of the JJFast. Um, and okay, this is old data, so the, the user accuracy should not be uh, maybe uh, taken too seriously. Uh, but the, the, the trend is definitely uh, uh, legitimate. Uh, so the higher the, the backscatter variability, the, the lower the, the um, uh, uh, user accuracy that we observed in the past. And uh, another uh, really nice uh, thing that we were able to, to do with this uh, um, long-term pantropical observation data was we, we uh, were able to uh, compare it with um, global precipitation data. And this case we used uh, the GS map uh, precipitation data provided by JAXA, a very nice uh, um, uh, service. So I, I, I highly encourage everybody to look into this if you need some uh, uh, precipitation data. And uh, basically what we what we were able to show is that uh, we can observe both positive and negative correlations uh, uh, depending on the amount of, of uh, precipitation. So here, uh, this case shows uh, the more precipitation we have, the higher the backscatter will be. And uh, in the lower case here, we can observe the opposite effect. So the more rain uh, falls, the, the lower the backscatter uh, will, will become. And uh, why is that? Uh, this is shown here in this comic. So depend on the on the on the of course on the forest type, on the on the uh, uh, intensity of of the flooding that that occurs. And uh, when we look at the more open uh, forest, uh, of course it becomes much more complicated. Um, and uh, yeah. and here uh, we, we showed some uh, maps uh, just showing the um, relationship between this uh, uh, amount of precipitation and the uh, observed radar backscatter. So very important, right? Uh, as if we want to have an operational uh, deforestation si detection system uh, uh, that works in rainy season and in dry season, so we have to uh, understand this and, and take these kind of uh, uh, effects into account. Yeah, uh, here just the impression from the from the helicopter uh, last year. I think it was really uh, impressive. So it, actually, it's it's the peak dry season, uh, but even uh, on on a dry day, we can have uh, rainfall anywhere, anytime. Uh, and these very small uh, uh, rain cells, uh, of course, this is uh, what what cause uh, a real headache for the uh, operation deforestation detection. And uh, I think uh, probably uh, when we look at this uh, and we have a observation right at this time, uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, avoid a false alarm uh, over these uh, uh, areas. But yeah, uh, that's that's the uh, difficult thing to to achieve. Um, okay, then yeah, let's talk a little bit about, about the the um, algorithm that we currently use. So most important actually uh, for the developing development of the new algorithm was to use the full time series information that, that ALOS2 provided us. And uh, uh, we developed uh, actually a pixel by pixel uh, approach uh, where we have uh, this kind of uh, time se series information for every pixel uh, everywhere in the, in the tropics. So we have uh, the uh, here time series in uh, HH, uh, HV and HH uh, polarization. And we can make some uh, probability density functions and uh, derive some uh, statistical parameters from that. Uh, and uh, this uh, really uh, uh, allowed us to, to do uh, some, some really groundbreaking uh, uh, achievements in the uh, further development of the algorithm. So the one uh, uh, thing that, that uh, we, we saw uh, uh, directly from this kind of uh, uh, time series uh, exploitation was uh, that we can easily see all the forests uh, that are affected by uh, by flooding. So here we zoom in again. This is a 50 meter resolution uh, uh, scanser data. But when we move in, uh, zoom in further, we see here this is actually a river. So the left and right bank of the river. And when we look carefully, there are some uh, black polygons. And this were actually uh, polygons detected by the version, I think, 2.0 or 3.0 algorithm. And when we have this kind of information, we can uh, uh, easily see that, okay, that's just along the flood zone of the of the river. And of course, all these uh, detections are uh, highly uh, likely false alarm. So we can just uh, remove this kind of you know, detection caused by, by flooding. Okay. And then the maybe even more important uh, uh, thing that we uh, were able to, to do with this uh, time series data was 
we were we understood that we don't have uh, to rely on any external uh, forest non forest mass because uh, our time series signal tells us for every pixel highly reliably uh, if it's a forest or, or not a forest. And of course, uh, this is ex extremely important if we talk about operational uh, deforestation detection, we have to have a uh, almost 100% reliable information uh, for every pixel. Is it a forest or is it not a forest? So in the, in the beginning of the JJ fast, it was uh, uh, very common, right? We used a, a, a not so uh, a suitable uh, a forest mask. And of course we get false alarms uh, everywhere where, where the algorithm thinks it's a forest, but in reality it's not a forest. And with this uh, uh, time series uh, forest, non-forest mask uh, approach, we basically elimin eliminated all the uh, errors caused by, by the uh, incorrect forest, non-forest information. So basically very uh, a simple approach. Uh, we used a, a fifth percentile in HV, so depending on the forest type, uh, we, we, we put a, a simple threshold. So here in the, this case, we have a, I think a minus 16 dB. So uh, the, the upper one, the upper pixel shows a forest and lower pixel uh, is below the threshold shows non-forest. And when we uh, look here, just the overlay of this uh, fifth percentile HV image over a sentinel image, we see that actually the, the, uh, the data tracks the, the uh, forest, non-forest conditions uh, almost perfectly. And yeah, of course, we, we uh, did some, some uh, uh, thorough uh, uh, evaluation of this and uh, yeah, in the current JJ fast, uh, the problem of uh, of of, of uh, uh, incorrect force mask is, is basically solved. Yeah, so now uh, actually um, let's talk about how Elvensa can actually detect uh, a deforestation. So here uh, we we uh, show a, a multi multi temporal color RGB composite. So we have uh, three consecutive observations uh, from uh, ALOS two. Uh, the latest observation uh, is in the R, uh, red channel, then the, the previous one is in the green, and the uh, uh, oldest one is in the, in the uh, blue channel. So then uh, we end up with uh, something like this here, uh, the HH case and the HV case. And uh, I can already tell you that uh, this here is a large uh, deforestation area surrounded by, by pristine uh, primary forest in the uh, border region of Acre State and uh, Amazon State in, uh, in the uh, west part of the uh, uh, Amazon Basin. And uh, yeah, what we see here in the upper corner is some bright area that's uh, flooding, right? And uh, we see, it, we can see it in the HH polarization. We don't see it in HV polarization. And we have uh, four, four spots, A, B, C, D. And for each spot, uh, we have uh, uh, this time series uh, diagram. Uh, so when we look here at the A, A spot uh, in the forest, so it looks uh, nothing happening here. And uh, yeah, then let's, let's uh, check what's uh, happening uh, when we move on. So next observation was uh, 42 days later, May 2023. So we see here the flooding goes uh, already goes back a little bit, and uh, a spot uh, here is uh, still uh, nothing happening, right? Uh, looks looks uh, unchanged. Uh, B, C uh, also uh, stable. But then uh, we we make a jump uh, uh, to the beginning of August, and uh, suddenly you can see these uh, red spots here in the upper left and upper right corner, and. Uh, well, here, when we look at the uh, di uh, time series diagram, we see, here, of course, uh, suddenly uh, we uh, observe an increase in the HH backscatter. And uh, actually, surprisingly, and I think that was the first time actually we, 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 we observed this or, or somebody showed it, that we also observe uh, the increase in HV backscatter. Uh, here, we see also some, some red colors in the HV and we see here some slight increase, uh, at least 0.2 dB increase. 0.5 dB increase, and uh, the the HH signal goes up by by more than 2 dB. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we move on uh, another 42 days uh, to mid September. The previously red uh, areas become yellow. Why is that? Because the uh, backscatter is still high, so we have the uh, R and G uh, uh, high backscatter giving yellow color, and now the middle section uh, turned red. 
So something uh, happened happened here in the meantime. And uh, yeah, when we look at the C, uh, the control point, uh, the, the forest signal, surrounding forest signal is stable. But uh, yeah, the uh, backscatter uh, in this area still uh, increased actually. And uh, for B, we see here uh, uh, also like a 2 dB uh, increase of the uh, backscatter intensity. Then uh, the, the last date, uh, uh, another 42 days later, we see uh, this area is wide. So that means whatever causes this high backscatter is still there. And the, the middle section turned yellow. So, uh, And uh, now when we look at the HV signal, we can see that in, for HV, for the cross polarization, we suddenly see a decrease. So if we try to detect this kind of uh, uh, scenario in a, with a HV, uh, uh, algorithm, uh, maybe now it's the timing where we can detect something. And this is also uh, right, the case if we want to use high frequency uh, uh, data. So I think uh, C-band, I think uh, in the, at the earliest, uh, we can see uh, something uh, at this point, right? Um, but actually for this area, we tested C-band and uh, we didn't work uh, at all because the, the uh, the biomass was, was just too high. And then uh, actually in the C-band, uh, the signal already goes back up. So at L-band, we can, we can see it. And actually, what are we seeing? Uh, because we in the peak dry season, we have this, this uh, a nice um, uh, Sentinel-1 time series. And uh, we look here at the July 30 image, which is almost same timing like the August 1st. We see that they start uh, deforestation uh, from the uh, left and right. And uh, actually, that's the typical scenario. What they do right? when they try do this kind of illegal deforestation, they, they start at uh, uh, different uh, points so to make it look uh, actually smaller when they when they in the optical image. So they they uh, 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 try uh, one one way to uh, to deceive uh, uh, the, the authorities in, in in Brazil. And then we uh, look right. They 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 continue the uh, deforestation. Uh, and they start actually at the at this middle section, and then uh, at this uh, September uh, 12 observation, ALOS 2 observation, we see that the uh, deforestation is completed. And then actually we can see here the change in the color it turns it gets a little bit darker, and that's uh, 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 caused by burning. Right? So they just uh, uh, burn uh, the all the biomass on the ground. And uh, that's what causes the, the, the decrease in HV. But uh, as we can see, it does not cause a, a decrease in uh, HH signal. OK, yeah. And uh, what is actually happening in the, in, in the uh, uh, radar uh, backscatter? So we have the uh, undisturbed rainforest. So the first thing we can observe a uh, HH increase is this uh, uh, flooding scenario, right? What we observe uh, here in this corner, but that's of course exactly what we don't want to uh, detect. So we, we already uh, talked about it, how we can avoid it. Uh, then the, the next uh, thing, how we can get this uh, increase in uh, HH or also in HV is uh, by, by uh, degradation. And of course, talk when we talk about 50 meter resolution, of course, uh, we, we, we uh, require some, uh, quite a significant degradation. But uh, we have uh, definitely cases uh, uh, where we uh, uh, can detect uh, such kind of, uh, of, of uh, partial deforestation. But of course, the, the, the uh, clearest case, what we are uh, uh, looking for is uh, the uh, uh, clear cutting. And uh, yeah, the important thing is, right, uh, uh, in, in this kind of environment, the high biomass uh, primary uh, rainforest uh, the deforesters cannot remove the the the, um, the biomass, right? Um, uh, that's why we still observe, right? After, after three months after the deforestation happened, the the, the, back, the backscatter is still high because all the uh, biomass is still there. So usually, what happens? They they go in at some point, uh, uh, do the uh, um, uh, degradation or the, the um, selective logging, right? taking out maximum 5% uh, of the trees uh, that have a, a market value. I think in most places, it's, it's even much less. So maybe two out of, of, of 100 trees are taken out. But the problem is then there's a road 
and people can access it. And eventually they come, they cut it down and they cannot remove uh, the biomass because if they want to do that, they would uh, need thousands of trucks and uh, they will surely get caught. They don't have the, 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 the money and yeah, they don't want to get, get uh, caught. So what they do, eventually they set it on fire and uh, in most cases they will uh, put meadows uh, and use it as pasture for, uh, for, for cattle. Okay, yeah, and then uh, understanding all this, so we were able to, to uh, develop this uh, new algorithm. Um, most important, I think well, I already mentioned that, is that we uh, uh, can process a forest, non-forest mask on the fly. We can uh, uh, relative, relatively uh, well uh, remove all the errors caused by, by flooding, short-term and long-term, seasonal and, and, and just the occasional flooding. And uh, yeah, using this uh, time series information, we also can um, do automatic uh, adjustment uh, according to the, to the um, environmental conditions during the observation. So if we have a, a rainy day or, or, or longer dry period, uh, and yeah, this uh, is actually what allows us to, to really have an operational uh, system now. So one very important thing was uh, the, uh, well, is the uh, uh, calibration and validation. And I think this is also first time uh, anybody has ever done such a, a, a thorough uh, uh, validation uh, effort. So we have uh, uh, three um, validation sites, uh, one by one degree tiles. And uh, for uh, six uh, dates, we uh, checked all the available high resolution uh, planet data for these areas and, and uh, by hand uh, 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 mapped out the, the uh, polygons that, that show um, a deforestation. Of course, right? Uh, uh, of course, such a data set is still not 100% reliable because in many cases, it's just, it is really difficult or almost impossible to see on an optical satellite image, uh, is it really deforestation or was it forest or was it not forest before it changed from green to brown? But uh, I, I think of course it's, it's uh, definitely the best thing uh, we, we can do. Uh, here's one example uh, of this uh, validation set and the uh, detection performance of the uh, new algorithm. So we have a, a forest uh, in the beginning of July. And then uh, during the next observation, uh, 42 days later, we uh, detect uh, this polygon and uh, looking at the uh, corresponding planet image, we can see that actually, yeah, it, it, the forest is gone. And actually this is the only case uh, that we uh, consider as a true detection. Uh, so then uh, when we uh, look here 42 days later, actually then the, the secondary HV algorithm uh, detects something uh, why is that? Because they burned uh, in between. So we can see some signs of burning. Uh, but uh, in this case, actually, uh, we, we say this is not a true detection anymore because uh, the forest uh, was already, has already uh, uh, been uh, gone uh, uh, six, uh, six, six weeks earlier. Um, so we have a very strict uh, 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 validation criteria. Uh, yeah, this shows uh, uh, just actually how carefully we did this uh, calibration and validation uh, uh, and uh, to, we did some parameter tuning to optimize for user accuracy or producer accuracy. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, the result of this. And uh, here we show uh, three different settings. And um, yeah, we, of course, we basically develop it. Our, our main uh, customer is uh, uh, Ibama in Brazil. and. Uh, uh, for them, it's uh, most important to have the uh, smallest um, uh, amount of false alarm. Uh, so uh, they they uh, like the setting A. They want a high user accuracy. And I think for the producer accuracy, probably we, we should not uh, uh, take this too seriously because, as I mentioned, in many cases, uh, uh, the, the optical image shows uh, some green to brown. And if we really go to the field, we see actually it was not a real uh, forest or not a real deforestation. So this uh, producer accuracy in reality is probably higher. Yeah, then we uh, did uh, uh, some field survey actually, right, to to show our, our our partners in Brazil that actually ALOS 2 can really uh, do the job. So this was uh, the first uh, uh, 
uh, survey in June uh, last year, so just after developing the new algorithm, and was more like a, a proof of concept. At this time, we, we didn't have the uh, full uh, uh, accuracy yet, but we could show that the principle of the new algorithm uh, works. And all the areas that we detected, uh, uh, this is also in the Acre uh, region, so really the frontier of the of the uh, uh, deforestation where they really uh, go into the uh, primary forest and, and and cut them down, and uh, yeah, when we go there to the detection, so it's still fresh. We see a lot of green colors because they just cut down the forest. We see uh, uh, people working there, and actually this uh, this year last uh, last uh, visit to Brazil, I talked a lot uh, to the uh, federal police, and I learned actually that in most of these cases, the people who do the uh, cutting uh, by by hand, so every tree by tree with chainsaws, are uh, slaves. They are not even paid, so they, they just brought into these these areas and uh, uh, they work there for, for a couple of months because apparently they feel, or the people who control these kind of deforestation feel very safe. So even doing the working in this site at three, over three months, they, 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 they think they will not get caught. But uh, with ALOS 2, uh, actually we, we see what they're doing and uh, uh, this shows actually the, um, uh, detection with uh, JJ fast and uh, also high resolution uh, data. And when we look uh, here, actually it shows like kind of a puzzle because we really detect only the, the freshly deforested uh, uh, areas over two different dates. And then we end up with this 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 puzzle and we see actually how they uh, deforest that. And uh, yeah, then uh, uh, June this year, uh, just two months ago or three months ago, we went again, uh, showing the uh, mature uh, algorithm, uh, did this in the uh, uh, Para state, uh, just the south of the Amazon River. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, uh, actually were quite happy that we uh, um, uh, could show some good results. So this is an example of the uh, uh, report sheet that uh, we uh, provide to Ibama uh, for one of the uh, sites that we visited. Uh, so we have a, a, a really nice detec uh, detection. And the thing right in this area, so this is close to Santa Rem, and when we are next to some large uh, um, uh, city, we cannot expect to find a really uh, uh, primary uh, uh, forest, uh, this, this, this uh, really uh, high priority deforestation. So in this case, it was really, really nice to see actually what are the lower limits uh, for our algorithms, what we can detect. And all of the, the, the sites that we detected were some kind of uh, secondary uh, forest. But here, Again, we see that uh, yeah, we really do uh, uh, early time uh, uh, detection. So we see actually when we go to the field, it's, it's, uh, everything is ex very fresh. Uh, the, the, the leaves are still green. And as is, uh, as is seen on the previous slide, the machinery is, is still there. But it's basically agricultural areas and uh, now they, they cut the, 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 the secondary forest down uh, uh, to, to do some uh, agriculture. So uh, it's not a high priority target. Uh, here, yeah, just uh, the uh, example of the time series HHHV for this site. And we see here this uh, 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 increase in HHH -H that allows us to, uh, to, to uh, do the detection. And that's the, the summary of the, of the um, uh, field survey. Uh, we visited, I think, uh, 11 uh, uh, JJFAST polygons. Uh, eight of those polygons were correct. So we have a user accuracy of, of around 73%. And uh, only uh, two omissions were observed in this area. So we have a, a producer accuracy of 80%. And uh, important here, uh, right, we um, uh, compared it with the DTR. DTR is the uh, uh, operational uh, 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 system that Ibama or Brazil is using. Uh, it's based on a manual interpretation of optical images. And we see that actually only one site was, was detected uh, uh, by, by the state test system and all the other sites uh, uh, were not detected even after one month uh, later. So that means that ALOS2 or JJ fast, uh, now it, it's, it's really fast. Huh? And uh, yeah, and it's uh, fully automatic. So we don't have to, uh, we don't have to use any, any manual uh, labor. Uh, okay, and then we uh, uh, also uh, do some uh, validation, online validation, how the, the new algorithm is performing. 
um, we launched the, the uh, or the latest uh, uh, version update is uh, version 4.1.3. Uh, so uh, we uh, started this uh, uh, beginning uh, end of May, uh, cycle 258. Um, and we detected uh, uh, yeah, these uh, some 500 polygons uh, every, every observation. And uh, this shows uh, the, the validation principle using the high resolution optical uh, planet data. So only if it changes from forest to non-forest, we, we, uh, we consider it correct. Yeah, so basically uh, the JJ fast can detect uh, polygons uh, with a size of a larger 1.2 hectare. And uh, that's uh, the um, uh, validation results. So on the left-hand side, we, we uh, see for each uh, one by one degree tile, uh, the uh, number of, of true detections uh, in each area, the colors indicate the, the user accuracy. And on the right-hand side, uh, the colors show the number of false alarms. So we see when we look at the at all the small polygons, we still have uh, right, of course, uh, areas where we have uh, uh, fair amounts of, of, of false alarms. But uh, of course, the important thing is that in Brazil or basically nowhere in the world, people are interested in the in these very small small scale uh, deforestations. Uh, it's, more importantly, especially when we talk about the scanser data, we should we should use it right, and we should try to detect uh, uh, the larger deforestations the, the, that have higher priority uh, with with higher accuracy. So this shows uh, the case for uh, polygons larger than five hectare, and we can see that uh, already the uh, user accuracy uh, increased significantly. And here, when we look at this this uh, along the arc of deforestation. We see that we detect uh, a lot of uh, polygons and we have already a lot of areas. When we see zero here, it means we have actually a perfect uh, user accuracy with, without any false alarms. Uh, the total uh, user accuracy is around 72% for, for polygons larger than uh, five hectare. And uh, the, the uh, um, requirement from Ibama is basically 70% uh, user accuracy. So they want, uh, for 10 detections, they want less than uh, three false alarms. Uh, of course, it's uh, important when they send out the people with by helicopter to, to uh, do the fiscalization or, or, or uh, arrest people. Uh, of course, they, they, they uh, want to have the, the higher reliability. But actually, five, five hectares is still small in the, in, the, in the tropical rainforest, in the Amazon area, uh, when we look at the uh, uh, areas with uh, more than 10 hectare, which is still not very large, uh, we, we already have a, a, a user accuracy of uh, around 90%. And uh, we see here, I think this is a, a observation time of 2.5 months. So we detected uh, uh, 314 uh, true detection. And basically, of course, if we, if we give this information to uh, Ibama or, or, or what we do, uh, they could just check all these polygons and uh, basically stop the, the deforestation uh, already if they do it. But uh, of course, that's a, uh, a, a political question. But uh, the good news is that Obama is hiring more people. So I hope uh, in the future they, they, they will uh, really uh, use all our, our polygons and, and just uh, show the deforest that, that, that uh, uh, we see what they're doing. OK, uh, what's next? Just a, a quick uh, look into the future. So, uh, but uh, to understand uh, or to to, to uh, see what the future brings, we uh, first look a, a little bit back. So, currently now I've been talking only about the ALOS two, but of course uh, uh, the Japanese uh, Elban SAR history started with JES one uh, launched in ninety two, uh, first operational Elban SAR for for land observation, and. Uh, 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 wonderful ALOS mission, first fir first uh, fully polarimetric SAR, and uh, yeah, uh, ALOS two. The important step forward was the, was this uh, uh, dual polarization white white source data that only allowed to to do this uh, JDFAST observation. And when we look at here, this uh, uh, famous theme park uh, in Tokyo, uh, I'm not saying the name, starts with a D and ends with a Y. You can see how how uh, big the uh, date the image quality improved. Uh, but we are very, very happy that uh, 
um, in July 1st, we've uh, finally launched the uh, ALOS 2. So here, let's uh, look at this uh, uh, small video. So, and right, uh, so Japan did not only develop the ALOS 4, but we also developed a, a complete new launcher, the H H3 rocket. And uh, here we uh, see the uh, preparation. It's the ALOS 4 put into the uh, uh, capsule and uh, loaded onto the onto the launcher. And uh, yeah, original launch date was uh, planned for June 30, and because of the the weather, we postponed it by one day. So this is in the night, uh, July 30 to June 1st, and yeah, launch 11:56, uh, textbook launch. Uh, actually, third launch of the the rocket, and uh, yeah, the uh, the um, scary part was this: the the separation of the uh, second uh, uh, rocket stage that went wrong. Uh, maybe some people uh, remember last year we we lost the ALOS three on the uh, maiden launch of the H three rocket. But uh, yeah, this time everything went 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 perfect. Uh, the uh, critical uh, operation phase was uh, was 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 uh, completed, uh, and uh, now I think this this month we we will start the uh, calibration uh, and validation phase, and hopefully uh, by the beginning of next year in January we we, we will be able to distribute uh, uh, the data to the user. And what's actually the the the, the big new step of the ALOS four? That's okay. The first. Uh, um, uh, Earth observation SAR with a digital beam forming uh, capability. And this allows us to uh, observe uh, 200 kilometers worth at high uh, resolution uh, mode. So we don't have to deal with this uh, coarse GANSA data anymore. Um, okay, now this is uh, just an example of the uh, very first image. So we have some area in the, in the Amazon uh, rainforest observed by ALOS Pulsar in 2007, then by ALOS 2 in uh, 2015, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, two months ago uh, by ALOS 4. And we see actually this is uh, uh, only one, one swath. So here we have a composition of three uh, neighboring so, sorry, swaths. Sorry, Christian, to can... interrupt you. Um, I can't see really. I just see still the JAXA oh. video. Oh, ah, sorry, sorry. OK, great. Thank you. OK, sorry. <laughs> Okay, the, the, I was I, I was talking about uh, these images, ALOS one, ALOS two, ALOS three, and we see ALOS uh, sorry ALOS four, and we see here this uh, two hundred kilometer swath in high resolution mode. Uh, so we uh, uh, yeah we uh, can do wide swath observation at high resolution. So this is a really uh, big news there. And to show actually uh, what is going on in the in the in the Amazon rainforest in terms of deforestation when we uh, take a closer look at this area uh, 20 uh, 2007 2015 and then 2004 we see that actually it's very important that we do uh, the, the deforestation detection and uh, uh, yeah I think in I hope in the in the future in five years uh, this increase can be can be stopped uh, okay and the very last thing I want to show, uh, uh, what we can do with the high resolution data and uh, with ALOS 4 in the, in the future. So we have one, uh, um, uh, we have actually several uh, high resolution super sites for ALOS 2. Uh, one site is in Novo Progresso where we have a, a, a excellent time series of uh, more than 65 observations in uh, two and a half years. Uh, so now we, we use the high resolution mode, 10 meter, uh, and still uh, dual polarization. And basically we use the uh, same uh, algorithms that we currently use in the, in the uh, JJ Fast. So we start here, uh, end of the rainy season 2020. Uh, uh, so we detect something here. We see some red colors in the, this is again, a, a, a color, multi-temporal color RGB, HH and HV, and the uh, optical image in the, on the right. We see nothing much happening here. So now we see here these uh, uh, red colors, both in HHHV. We detect these these polygons. We go now. We move into the uh, rainy season. So the data quality uh, becomes worse and worse. But uh, ALOS ALOS two uh, L band SAR can can see everything uh, uh, clearly. 
we see the flooding during the rainy season along the river. And then, okay, here they uh, go crazy now. Uh, so they, they start uh, at uh, six or seven different spots, uh, the deforestation. Uh, still rainy season, right? Under the clouds, we, 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 we detect how it's growing. So the, the uh, uh, Albansar image shows uh, really nicely what, uh, how this, this uh, area is progressing. That's what we uh, detect automatically. And then, uh, uh, yeah, they are basically done. Uh, I think uh, 2,000 hectare deforestation in, 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 in three months. And uh, important uh, point to, to uh, make here is that uh, we can detect it, right, when they start doing it. And uh, if they want to stop it, they can stop it uh, at that point. And uh, we, can, we could have saved uh, probably uh, uh, 1.5 thousand hectares uh, of, of this deforestation if we, if we act early enough. Yeah, as a take home message, I think we already, uh, ILOS 2 already can, can, can uh, help to, 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 to stop the deforestation, especially in the high uh, uh, biomass, high uh, priority uh, deforestation areas. And with ALOS 4, the high resolution mode, I think they will not be able to hide anything. So that's uh, at least a, a, a hopeful outlook in the future. So. Uh, that the uh, authorities in the in the in the uh, tropical countries uh, use our data and really uh, uh, stop uh, any illegal deforestation. So that's it uh, from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, I think we have time for some questions. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot, Christian. It was it's amazing uh, how much progress you could show uh, using Alus uh, data and with all generations. And congratulations for the new launch. Uh, it's amazing pictures you're showing already, and also first results. Uh, uh, great talk, and thanks for this very inspiring uh, view of uh, what Alus can do. Um, we have a lot of questions actually in the chat. <laughs> I will just start uh, to read them and probably you can answer them or try to answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, we will see how much time we need for it. Um, but yes, <laughs> let us just start. The first question was, what is the difference between the Scansar data and the Alus Palsa mosaics? These data sets have been in, in, or have these data sets been ingested in the Google Earth engine? Um, yes, the, the, the Scansar time series data is in the uh, Google Earth engine. And the difference between the mosaics is the mosaics use uh, high resolution data. And the problem with these mosaics is that uh, they are composed of different seasons, right? And uh, that's the big advantage of using uh, uh, the, the uh, time series Scansar data that we have uh, Everywhere in the tropics, nine scenes per year. In many areas, we have even higher higher frequency, and uh, so we don't have to have to deal with these. Uh, uh, okay, uh, combining different different seasons, uh, flood season with uh, dry season, which causes a huge uh, problem. One reason why uh, the um, forest non-forest mass we used in the past were not that reliable. <laughs> so okay. yeah, please please use the Scansa data uh, freely available in there. Google Earth Engine. Great. Then another question is the JJ FAS will be open to the community, the ALUS uh, question mark, and the ALUS 2 and ALUS 4 will be open to the community with amplitude and phase as a question mark again. Uh, the JJ FAST is already uh, available for everybody. So you can just go to the website and all the, the these uh, uh, alert polygons uh, are, are freely available. You can download as a, as a shape files or, or KML. And uh, yeah, for the for the data policy of uh, ALOS 4, I, 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 I cannot say uh, too much. Uh, and But uh, I, I don't think it will be uh, freely uh, available to anybody, but uh, yeah, let's see. Yes. <laughs> okay, and next question, how can we download ALUS2 data and what type of level? Probably meant um, what, what kind of uh, processing level? Yeah, so of course, I think uh, the, the um, thing, everybody who wants to use ALUS2, and I think everybody should want to use ALUS2, ALUS4 data, uh, what you should do is uh, write a, a, a proposal, a research proposal. Unfortunately, the, the, the first call um, 
just ended, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have a, a, another a call for the research agreement uh, uh, very soon. So just uh, uh, check the ALOS 2, ALOS 4 homepage and, and uh, maybe uh, once a month or every two weeks uh, and uh, write a proposal and you will get the data uh, for free. Um, yeah, that's uh, the suggestion. If you if you only want to use the Scansa data, time series data, you don't have to do anything. This is already freely available uh, on the Google Earth engine, and uh, I think also download via uh, by our, by our service, and maybe on the AWS. Uh, I think ASF also also uh, distributes some of the data. Okay, great. Yes. Another question is: Do you have any paper on the mentioned effect of the of precipitation on backscatter? on the correlation between urban backscatter and precipitation. It would be great to get more details on that. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I think we have a pretty uh, good proceedings paper for the OISA 2022. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, full journal paper. OK, uh, I will, it will come uh, eventually. <laughs> but I think the, the, the OISA paper, uh, USA paper is, is uh, already pretty uh, good and I think uh, explains uh, uh, the details of the data that I showed uh, here. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Just going further. Um, oh, yeah. How can we remove the effect of seasonality in the time series data? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a very, very specific questions already. Um, yeah, basically, what we have to understand or the, the algorithm, our algorithm understands uh, the, 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 the change. So we know the, the, the statistics of, of the, the, the targets that we're looking at. And we, we, we understand if uh, the, there's some uh, increase or decrease. To some extent, uh, we, we, we classify it as a uh, seasonality. Of course, we also in the in the tropics uh, things that that often uh, overseen is that also the the trees have a, a phenology, right? So even in the in the in the evergreen uh, rainforest, uh, trees leave uh, loses the leaves uh, at some point. So this kind of effects can all be be understand understood with a long enough time series. And we have this 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 wonderful time series since twenty sixteen. So in most cases, uh, we we can avoid such kind of uh, false alarms. But of course, uh, you, you've seen you've seen it. Uh, it's it's uh, of course not not uh, perfect. Uh, but uh, yeah, when we look at the larger the larger deforestations, uh, we we have it uh, pretty well under control uh, with a uh, better than seventy percent accuracy. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, then, then there was one question about how large are this area that you monitor? Um, I mean, I saw it's, uh, it's huge patches that you have and closely whole Amazonas. Is it this area or you are doing yeah, smaller uh, patches? Um, basically, JJFAR started uh, really doing the, the observing all the tropics. Uh, the truth is in uh, uh, since April, uh, we basically decided, or, or the JICA, the, the, the uh, project, uh, uh, guys who uh, in charge of the project, uh, decided to focus on the uh, Amazon uh, basin. So okay. uh, currently we, we uh, focus mainly on the uh, legal Brazilian Amazon, but uh, also the, the surrounding area. And uh, we, we still do the, uh, the Cerrado area in, in Brazil, but the... Uh, the accuracies, of course, are not as as good as in the in the rainforest. Mm -hmm. What what actually ALOS two scanser data is is good for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's a question: if the ALOS two data are also parametric, and if the parametric data can be downloaded. Um, I think you can get the. Uh, Scansa SLC data, so you you can do a, a polarimetry with a with um, that in the op, for the operational use. We don't do any any uh, of that stuff because ba basically it's a now maybe we could start using it, but there was a, a, a question of the computational cost, right? We 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 uh, want to have this uh, JJ fast, really fast. So we ob observe the all all of the tropics, 
So we only use the, the amplitude data. Um, mm -hmm. the, the thing is what I forgot to, forgot to mention, the JJFAS, basically uh, we provide the information uh, of the deforestation detections three days after the observation. And so um, that's, that's uh, really fast and uh, yeah, fast enough uh, uh, for the authorities to actually go uh, and, and arrest people in the field. Mm -hmm. um, but if, yeah, if you want to do uh, polarimetry with scan scanser data, of course, I, 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 I tried it. I, I, we, we, we tested it for some applications. Um, it, yeah, scanser data quality is not uh, perfect, but, uh, but we can, uh, of course, uh, it's, it's only dual polarization, but we can do a, a, a partial polar, polarimetric decomposition, get some uh, entropy or, or alpha uh, information from, from uh, scanser data as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then another question was, what kind of pre-processing steps do you recommend for ALUS 2? And do you have any recommendation for pre-processing steps? Uh, that's also a, a very specific <laughs> <laughs> question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, not sure. But uh, yeah, if, if you if you if you use SLC data, of course you have to do all the the the, the basic sub processing by yourself, right? Uh, uh, the uh, geocoding, terrain correction. Um, but you can you can get uh, higher higher processing levels, uh, the uh, level one point five already uh, auto rectified, or the 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 uh, uh, highest product is a uh, level two point one, and basically this is uh, analysis ready data, so you can just. Uh, 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 put it in your GIS and 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 uh, start using it without uh, having to worry about all uh, any of this uh, uh, SAR processing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, which definition of gamma naught was used? Was terrain flattening applied to the backscatter estimation? Ah yes, That's yes. A nice question. Yeah, and which definition of gamma naught was used? Is there? Yeah, I'm not sure, but but basically, I think he the the second part of the question was that yeah, so terrain corrected, uh, uh, okay, and uh, amplitude data, yeah. Okay, then another question is: Is it possible um, to extract dam from ALOS, a digital elevation model? Um, yeah, actually, the the thing is for ALOS one had this uh, ALOS one had uh, three uh, uh, sensors, right? The the pulsar. And uh, two optical systems, the half near multispectral and prism. Uh, and the prism was stereoscopic, uh, uh, panchromatic, high resolution uh, sensor. And uh, JAXA is, is uh, uh, providing the uh, ALOS, um, oh, oh, what's the AW30DEM. Uh, uh, so this is an uh, ALOS one based uh, um, uh, digital elevation model. Uh, so, yeah, please uh, access it. Uh, via via the uh, uh, JAXA EURC uh, website, so okay. e easy to find. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, SAR based. Yeah. Okay, and then the question is: What is the recommendation for removing effects of flooding in these scenarios if we are going for machine learning over large areas? It's a very specific uh, question too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah. Ba basically, you just have to uh, to to train your algorithm to to by using this time series to show, okay, this is a a forest area uh, affected by flooding, and this is not. I think it's uh, quite quite uh, uh, straightforward if you have the the time series information. Uh, what I showed, just using the the uh, a standard deviation or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another question. How did the accuracy differ between the case of the FBD, which means probably fine beam mm -hmm. data, uh, to the one, to other ones in principle, and uh, specifically to the WBD, to the white beam? Yeah, of course, that's, that's a good question. Of course, uh, with the, 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 the FBD data is much much better than the uh, scanser WBD data. So we have a better, better uh, geometric and radiometric accuracy. So uh, we, we, we haven't done uh, such a, a large, a large scale validation that we done for the, for the uh, uh, JJ fast operation, JJ fast data, but for the uh, small test cases, we've seen uh, um, 
uh, accuracies are uh, uh, extremely, extremely good. And uh, I think we can detect, uh, uh, I think uh, 0.25 hectare is, is uh, realistic, probably for the operational uh, algorithm, we're gonna uh, stick to 0.5 hectare, but uh, we, we expect uh, accuracies uh, around 80%, uh, both uh, for, for user and producer accuracy. Okay, and then the question, uh, another question is if you have also available, so you have a lot of soil data, the question was, are there also ground truths associated to it and if they are available? Um, yeah, well, the ground truths, basically that's what I showed, this, this uh, validation calibration data that we have. Um, if you contact us directly and we wanna have some cooperation, I think there are some some uh, possibility to share this this data, but uh, we didn't uh, uh, make it open, or you cannot just download it uh, free uh, on the on the website. But if you want to have uh, use this data, uh, please uh, contact me, and uh, we we can see what we what we can do. Yeah. Um, Christian, I'm sorry, but I think there's still a lot of questions. I'm not sure sh if we should go through all of them still. Yeah, may may <laughs> maybe. Is it okay uh, yeah, if I, I go over... still, or you have still some time, yeah, or people I, have still I'm, some time? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, okay. I'm, I, I have time. <laughs> so let, let us still continue five minutes around, and then still let us recap okay, again. No <laughs> and then another question is, can ALOS 4, uh, PISA 3 be suitable for a GLOF? and other disaster management techniques. So gloves are these uh, outbursts, the glacier outbursts um, that you have, for example. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm highly <laughs> biased and I think ALOS, ALOS 4 can do uh, almost everything. Right? And for this kind of uh, uh, disaster application, of course, uh, Elbensa is, uh, is, is fantastic. If we have high resolution Elbensa, and uh, basically I think you, you know that uh, uh, the main uh, reason why uh, Japanese government pays for, 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 for the ALOS uh, satellite series is uh, disaster mitigation. Uh, so this is uh, probably higher priority than uh, the, the forest monitoring. I agree. So then there's a question, which sensor or band would be best for methane detection? Oh, I don't <laughs> think you can do it with radar. Huh? This is uh, yeah. uh, for the optical task. Uh, I, of course, we, 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 I think we do this, uh, JAXA is doing this with the uh, GCOMW uh, 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 satellites, uh, GCOM satellite series, but uh, I, I'm uh, sorry, I'm not an expert in this, but uh, please, please uh, uh, check the, the GCOM mm -hmm. uh, uh, website. I agree. And then somebody is asking when we can expect ALOS 4 data, but you you mentioned already before, probably they will be not yeah. available in the moment for the users yeah. or for the yeah. scientists. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, this, this month uh, we, we start a, a calibration validation phase and uh, the plan is to finish by the end of the year so that we uh, are able to, to start uh, operational, uh, uh, the operational phase of ALOS and start distributing data to the users uh, in January. So that is the plan. Uh, let's let's hope uh, <laughs> we can do it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, one one problem with the ALOS ALOS four is that it's, it's really com something completely new, right? It's the first time we use this uh, digital beam forming, uh, phase spoiling. So uh, I think uh, it will be uh, quite challenging to 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 do. But uh, we have of course uh, very brilliant people in the calibration validation uh, team. Uh, so, yeah, I think they will be uh, working really hard uh, in the next uh, three, four months. And uh, yeah, hopefully in January, everybody can 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 uh, start using the, the ALOS 4 Pulsar 3 data. Okay, January sounds good. It's not so far anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the next question. Would it be helpful to use a high-resolution Elban product, for example, 7 meter, as reference data for classification during both wet and dry seasons? and then monitor with a lower resolution product, for example, 40 meter at a higher temporal frequency of 12 days. Do you see this as, is, uh, as a useful approach for detecting disturbances in riparian buffer zones during agricultural conversion, mm. where the goal is to clearly define the cut line of the plantation? Okay, also very specific, but I think, yeah, it, it, it sounds uh, uh, promising. 
And mm -hmm. of course, I think this is the right right way to use it. So if we have high resolution data, uh, we can understand the, the small scale processes and then uh, combine it with the with the coarser scale data. And ba basically, that's that's what we did uh, uh, with the JJ fast, and uh, we we could only develop the the the, the uh, really uh, uh, put capable algorithm for for, for the coarse scale data. Uh, because we understood that we had these uh, uh, high resolution uh, time series data available and could actually understand the, the processes at a smaller scale. Uh, so I think, yeah, you know, this, this approach is definitely uh, sound. Mm -hmm. And then there's still a question a little bit about ALUS2, if they are available, but we said already they are available. The Scansa mode is available, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, the, in the Google Earth Engine. And then there's a second question to it associated, how many years do you know of operation is there in, uh, in the Google Earth Engine? Do you have an idea? Do you um, think yeah, it's over... I I think uh, for the for the uh, this pentropical uh, observation data, um, it's basically we started in January uh, twenty sixteen. Uh, so sixteen, okay. That, mm -hmm. that that should be so. We have uh, eight years uh, of of time series available, which mm -hmm. is really uh, outstanding, and and uh, I think uh, yeah, one of the really really uh, remarkable SAR data sets that are available. Okay, I just check now because we have also a chat which is called uh, F and so or Q and A, and here I think two of them are the same as we have already heard. But then there's one which is called "What is the impact of SAR DN so digital number values um, that are not converted to gamma naught values in decibel before analysis?" Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how to understand this this, this question. yeah um, so basically think, basically yeah mm -hmm. sorry yeah I, I think basically of course it, it, it doesn't change right so if you want to express it in db or, or not uh, yeah. the, the information you have is the same right? yeah so, the information yeah. content is the same i would yeah. agree on this yes okay and then i just uh shortly check on the if somebody was i think somebody was raising his hand even once i saw it I'm not sure if this person is still available. Um, I don't know uh, if this person likes, you can just speak up shortly if you're still there. I think somebody was raising the hand before once I saw it. If not, then we have gone through all the questions. <laughs> oh, great, great. And thanks a lot, Christian, again, uh, for this really great, amazing talk and answering all these urgent questions. Uh, so that's also important. Uh, and again, congratulations for this uh, launch of ALUS um, 4 now. So we are really looking forward uh, to, to see the data. I think they look already amazing. And uh, yeah, congratulations for this. And uh, I wish all, also the participants, thanks a lot for joining us today and hopefully see you for the next webinar again at uh, IEEE GRSS and potentially also for uh, hosting from the React team. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Bye. Yeah, thank you also from my side to all the participants uh, and thank you for the, for the congratulations, Irena, the very nice uh, hosting. Welcome. Then, yeah. Bye.